Well, good morning, folks. Good morning. It is a good morning. Today is July 8th, 2023. It's a Saturday morning, and you are listening to the ICT Shotgun Saturday. You like that? <laughs> so anyway, uh, I'm in a bit of a mischievous mood this morning. Sometimes I have these, and sometimes they take us on very, very long, long, long sessions. And I have to do my best to not do that today. I know some of you really like it, but my wife has asked to, to take a drive here shortly at nine o'clock. So this will be an abbreviated session. I do want to stay in her good graces because it is the weekend and that makes a very long weekend if she's not uh, pleased. Let's put it that way. All right. So discussion today is trading taboo days like non-farm payroll, FOMC days, and Mondays. I forgot to add that in the title, but I kind of like want to clear the air about what many people that are familiar with me and if they have something they want to sell or market or, you know, try to measure up or whatever, uh, they'll say that the ICT teaches that you shouldn't trade non-farm payroll and that you shouldn't trade FOMC days, and these are big moves. And they'll usually come out and they'll show their hindsight stuff and say, look at, look what I did over here, look what I did over there. But they didn't say anything in advance about what they were going to do. So to me, it's kind of, of a moot point. But uh, and, and what I'm talking about, like the screenshots where they show their MT4 results, where they're not really executing anything. So MT4, and MT5, all of that stuff can be faked. Um, it is what it is. And hopefully, you know, folks that are willing to share their results or prowess, uh, they can show you them executing and managing the trade, you know, from beginning to end. I'm a fan of that. You know, no matter what style of trading a trader might employ, I think it's fascinating to see how the human operator behind the executions navigates price action. And I wish there was more of it. There's a lot of folks on YouTube that don't know, don't really know how to trade, or they'll sit there and they'll look at a chart and do nothing. Music will be playing and they'll have something going on, but they're really not executing anything, or even given a play-by-play. -play. So you know, maybe this this comment will encourage a lot of you as my students to do that because while I can't be everywhere at one time, uh, I would love to be able to watch. My students execute. I have a, a number of them that I do watch, but I can't always be in your live streams because either I'm doing something or my attention's elsewhere. But let's talk about taboo days. Taboo days are days where I teach the new students, the, the folks that just come to me. They usually have no experience at all in trading or they're very inexperienced. And or... They have tried to trade with live money before they were ready. And they tried to trade these very days, you know, non-farm payroll Fridays, FOMC days, CPI days, you know, things like that. Um, I try to encourage students to avoid those days because let's face it, you know, if, if you want to go out there and want to play Russian roulette, you know, those are the days that'll end you real quick. And if you don't know what you're doing, you don't want to use a stop loss. You don't know when to stop if you're doing it wrong. Uh, those days will absolutely wipe you out. And I can tell you from firsthand experience, I've done that to myself when I was 20 years old. It was very easy and efficient for me to blow an account on any one of these types of days. And that's the reality of it. I know mentors and teachers and people out there in social media like to pretend that they're the goat and they can do this and do that. But I'm always constantly reminding you that you, you see a lot of time and energy and effort and study today. But I wasn't like that in the beginning. And I fell victim to these types of days. So I try to teach the students that are coming to me or that listen to my lectures or whatnot to you know, hopefully avoid those mistakes because it's easy to get lulled into thinking that these big market drivers are going to create that winning opportunity for you that'll put you over. You know, give you that really big win. And the problem with these types of days, because of the magnitude and the volatility that it presents, 
it's a huge enticement to either trade without a stop loss because you think you're going to be right and you just have to weather that uncertainty initially. Or you refuse to believe that you're wrong and you keep pushing and you keep pushing and keep pushing. And that was usually what happened to me when I was a younger man. I would get in there and try to force uh, my will, force my opinion on the marketplace versus understanding what it's doing. What is it telling me? And having something to go in with a model or an approach to, to capitalize on that future movement. And most of it was liquidity in time of day. And I didn't learn those lessons right away. I mean, no one, no one sat down and said, hey, Michael, you know, I've been watching you blow these accounts. <laughs> let's let's help you out here. That didn't happen. You know, no one was my mentor sitting next to me, like going to a classroom or anything like that. So I had very painful lessons. So when I hear other people say, and he pair it, part of what I said, but out of context, yes, primarily I try to teach my students that are brand new to stay away from not from payroll because they had initial excitement at 8.30 when it releases, you don't know what side they're gonna run for first. I don't always know that. Sometimes I do, I have an inkling, but sometimes I don't. So I have to wait for that initial run. But after the first half an hour is done, I can sit there and trade it the rest of the entirety of the day if it's gonna move around. But one of the strengths of not taking that initial run or trying to trade ahead of it in other words, being in a position before 8.30 on non-farm payroll is knowing that I will see where the liquidity is and whatever existing in inefficiencies are left in the wake of that initial surge that non-farm payroll or FOMC creates. So that, that's, the, that's the overwhelming confidence factor, the arrogance that sometimes you know, comes across to some people that are listening to me. It's not arrogance. It's absolute assurity that I know what I'm looking for. And if it's not clear in the chart, if I don't have something that I can show you that I've already taught with the language I've presented to you, then I'm not going to have anything to, to share with you. But generally, after the initial shockwave of whatever these news drivers are, I can go in there and tap dance and moonwalk out the door with something to show you as an example. Say, here's what you can do with this. and here's So it's an encouragement. Not for the new traders. It's not for the folks that are just now sitting down and still wondering what video to watch because they're brand new. Uh, you should not be trying to trade these days if you're like that. You know, if you're a new trader and you're less than six months in experience with using my content, you shouldn't even consider those days. You, you don't know enough. You don't know enough about yourself. You don't know enough about the things that's going to lead to your ruin. And it's not my concepts that will cause it real, and it'll be your impatience or your insatiable desire to get out there and just do something because doing something feels productive. And back testing and studying doesn't feel productive. For a long time, you'll feel that way until you get to that point where you know what you're looking for. And even after the initial surge of these types of report days, the visibility becomes perfectly clear. You know exactly what you're looking for. And when it materializes in the chart, you've already anticipated it. You're not reacting to it. You're anticipating it. And that's a level of confidence that really can't be articulated. And I always ask my students all the time, you know, what does it feel like? Once you get to that point, what does it feel like? And it's interesting to always you know, hear their response. And they still, you know, they understand what I mean by saying it's hard to articulate it because the words don't reach far enough to give you that it's like a superpower. Like you really understand yourself, you understand your model, and you know that you're not going to fall victim to the retail pitfalls and snares that I did as a young man and the majority of everyone else out there that aren't aware how markets book price. So for clarity and for the record, you absolutely can trade the non-farm payroll Friday, but it can't be ahead of the report and you should not try to do it until you have experience. That's all. That's all I'm saying. I want you to learn how to walk before you run. In those markets, they're fast. They can move ex you know, extremely quick to a liquidity pool or an inefficiency or whipsaw you real fast. 
And you need to be able to know, okay, this is not one of those days where I want to be a participant in. You know, you get burned one time, stop. It's not worth going back in. If you make a win and it's nice, stop. Be content with that. Uh, don't get wrapped up into you know, trying to prove yourself when you have these you know, clowns on the internet that talk nonsense. And then you got to feel like you got to go out there and slap the market around just to show them that they're nobodies, they're insignificant pissants. You don't need to do that. Trading is for you to make more money and change your lifestyle, not to impress people that you can't like or find an affinity for, because that's what social media is. It's a big cesspool of assholes and idiots. FOMC, you can absolutely trade those days, but it's better for you not to trade the morning session. And I teach this to my private mentorship students. They, they know this like the back of their hand. And now that you have the core content lessons on the YouTube channel, you'll hear me talk about that there as well. So I'm not holding that from you. It's been something I've been publicly stating all the time. The morning session of FOMC tends to be quiet or lackluster and sometimes it will move and that, that's the times when hindsight Harry comes back and says look at this this is this is what they the ICT this is tell you to trade but look what I did but you don't have any record of them telling you what was going to happen beforehand and so it, it's again pointless it's only meant to justify their insecurities and also to deter you from studying everybody that's making money with my content had that same struggling point listening to outside interference, doubts, hecklers, things like that. And you have to tune that stuff out. So while I do say majority of the time, Mondays should be left alone. When should you trade Mondays? Ooh, we're getting to the nitty gritty, are we? Well, if we have a news driver like non-farm payroll Friday, and we don't have a holiday, Unlike this particular week here, we just celebrated the Independence Day in the United States uh, this Tuesday, the past Tuesday. And that can create rather lackluster events in the beginning of the month. I'm sorry, in the beginning of the week. And that's why I said that the best trades will be on the latter end of this week, even though it's not a farm payroll. Usually the protocol that I teach my students to follow is non-farm payroll Fridays. You need to be done trading by Wednesday morning session. Take no new positions. If you're new, you do not do any new positions. Now, obviously, you can see I slapped the shit out of the markets this week on both Thursday and Friday. So it's it's not to say that you can't do it. I'm just stating as a mentor that it's advantageous for you to remove yourself from the potential risk because they can be rather aggressive. And you don't know yourself well enough yet, if you're brand new in less than six months experience, you don't know the tendencies that you're going to bring into those volatile days. Because it's real, real easy to think, I think this is going to tear off and do, you know, 100 pips in the pound dollar. I believe it's going to go 200 handles in the NASDAQ. And I want to be a part of that. It's real easy to talk yourself into that. and left to your own devices, you're going to go in there and do that and probably going to hurt yourself and then regret and scar tissue forms. And now you're afraid to take trades or you're going to blow the account and then walk away thinking that nobody makes money and ICTs are fraud. <laughs> so I do it for your protection. Okay. And my students know, my long-term students know that we absolutely have ways to go in there and fleece those markets on those days. But it's important for you to hear these things from me early on and, and many times by repetition, because you see what my students are doing with real money, they're, they're smashing it. And you see what I'm able to teach in advance, show you before it happens and then execute with precision. So when you see those things, it's natural. It's a human nature to, to want to gravitate towards that because you view that as success. You view that as what you want to do. You want to be able to do that. And if you just read the tweets and comment sections, you know, that are still available and the ones I just showed from yesterday's NASDAQ uh, PM session trading on YouTube that I put up, uh, they're live executions, folks. I mean, it's it's what it is. You can't hide it. It's there. And for people that says I can't trade or it doesn't work, 
show me something better. What did you make on Friday? What did you do? What did, what was your executions? Did you lose money? Did you make money? How much money did you make? So I'm having this discussion today because I want to tie up all these loose ends before we get to November, because there's a lot of nonsense that's spread around smart money concepts, ICT me specifically, and when, what can't be done, what shouldn't be done, what I said, what I didn't say. And Mondays, you should try to trade Mondays on a week like non-farm payroll. When there is no other holiday in the beginning of the week or prior to Wednesday, if there's a holiday in there, refrain from it. Expect more movement in the non-farm payroll event and Thursday ahead of it. Look what happened this week. That is a very specific characteristic of that calendar. If there's ever a holiday, okay, if there's ever a holiday during the week, Wednesday, Tuesday, or Monday of non-farm payroll, Thursday and Friday of that week will be absolutely bonkers. It will be moving around really nice. You'll have a lot of movement. Therefore, you'll have lots of opportunity to go in and find something, especially on a lower time frame chart. There's plenty, plenty of setups to be able to do whatever you're looking for. When should you not trade Mondays? You don't want to trade Mondays on a normal non-farm payroll Friday. Or did I say that right? I just think, I, think, I don't know, I can't, I can't go back and I'm talking to you live. You do want to trade Mondays on non-farm um, non -farm payroll Fridays when they're normal. Without a holiday, you do want to trade on Monday and Tuesday and be done by Wednesday. But if there is a holiday, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday of non-farm payroll Fridays, you do not trade on a Monday. Look to trade Thursday and Friday after non-farm payroll release. So obviously what, what fits good in that condition, silver bullet, 10 o'clock to 11. You can do the, the macros that I'll talk about tomorrow. We're only going to teach the uh, 950 to 1010 10, and 1050 to 1110 macros tomorrow, and we'll ease into the other ones, okay? Um, I want to teach those because I gave you examples of them. I actually did live executions with them, so you can see it. I'll be able to lean on those executions and talk about it in greater detail as to what I was using, what's going on during that time, and stop listening to these people out there that think they know my macro. They don't know, okay? And I understand you may be overzealous, okay? And you maybe you love me. Maybe you love what I'm doing, and it's not mean-spirited. You're not trying to be, you know, deceiving. But stop. Stop trying to talk about something you don't know yet. Okay, because you're 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 going to embarrass yourself, and it's just going to invite more people to troll you. And I'm not trying to have anybody get trolled. I'm, I, even the people that troll me, you know, I don't want anybody going over to anybody else's channel and talk shit to them because they're miserable. And I don't want any of my students that may be misguided in their pursuits to be significant online to be you know receiving trolls and. Uh, harassment that type of stuff because it's 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 wasted energy it's, you're not going to gain anything from it and i want to go out here in november on a high note so mondays we definitely look to trade if there is an event like for instance fomc fomc tends to be a wednesday thursday event not always but generally so that means you want to be trading on Mondays that week. Try to find something early on. Don't force it. Don't insist upon, I have to trade Monday because ICT now said no. Be more willing to do so. But if there is a event like not farm payroll and there's no holiday, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, we, we definitely trade Mondays. That absolutely is a thing. But we can't trade on Monday if we have a non-farm payroll event or FOMC and there's a holiday that week on a Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, you don't trade the Monday because everybody's going to be using some kind of sentiment idea ahead of that big report. Large funds will be positioning themselves ahead of that. So it's not a lack of buying and selling interest right ahead of these, these reports. When brokerages, 
are pulling the liquidity. Nobody stops and says, you know what time it is? It's 829, it's 828, it's 827. Non-farm payroll's coming out. Let me let me get my orders out of there. Let me stop my trading. No. All the liquidity is stifled. That's at the broker level. That's what's really going on. So you can get mad about that and say, oh, those assholes said this. They don't want to incur risk. Big moves can happen, folks. For the, for the folks that are listening to this and thinking, oh, that's bullshit. This guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Listen, that's exactly what's going on. And what do you think's happening when these big events like CPI come out? You get an email, it, it, usually from a reputable broker. If you have one, they'll tell you margins have been increased. What are they doing? They're making it harder for you to over leverage because even though they will pull the liquidity right ahead of the, the event, you can be positioned the night before during London. You could be positioned the day before. And that margin increase may affect a, a great percentage of the gamblers. So it's just a, a natural mechanism that brokers use. And if I had a brokerage firm, and I have no intention of ever having one, um, I would do those things too. It's just it's good business practice. Why would you open yourself up? Would you go out there? You know, in in the streets when when the riots were going on and run out there and say, hey, I dare somebody to stomp my ass right now. You wouldn't do that. Well, that's basically what a brokerage is doing if they let anybody go out there in these big events. Like look at CPI, for instance. OK, that's a taboo day. I tell you, don't trade ahead of it. Don't position yourself in front of CPI. Because you do not know how they're going to use that data. They may send it in the direction you thought it was going to go in. And there's been many times where it makes perfect sense for it to go a specific direction using my ideas, my experience, and then it goes the other direction. And you watched me do that two times live. And it proved the point why I tell you, don't try to position yourself after CPI. But after CPI's initial run, then I can go in there and beep, 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 find out all the runs to this liquidity, to this inefficiency, where it's going to go. You, it's in my live streams. And for the jokers that are saying, you don't ever trade in a live stream. I'm waiting for a, a live stream where I take an execution. I trade. It's in there. I really pushed the button. <laughs> I went short. I told you where it was going to go. Went in there. It was perfect. But I'm not going to dance for all of you. I'm not going to do that. But I will have to do executions because I have to show you entry. Like I have to show you doing that. We'll, we'll be there before November. It'll, it'll be there. But you're demanding things that are not owed to you. And when I show executions and, and videos where I'm outlining things, if I don't have a live audience, it's a it's very relaxing for me. So now I can just look at the price action and then do exactly what I normally do. I'm not trying to anticipate the viewership's questions that may arise by me doing this or that or not moving this to a specific level or not highlighting a specific candle that you think I should have highlighted. So it's it's a very distracting thing for me. So when I'm not distracted, I can use the, the time to focus on what it is I should be focused on and not have a thousand thoughts jumping in the front of my mind. So FOMC, we definitely can trade that after the first initial run. So FOMC is generally a two-stage event. At two o'clock in the afternoon, we wait for that initial run. We don't care where it's going to go. I don't care if it goes higher or lower. I don't, I don't care. I do know that that first run is generally the fake move. It's like a Judas swing. And then they keep it wherever it ran to. For instance, let's make an example and say, hypothetically, FMC sends it at 2 o'clock down in price. And this hangs down there until 2.30. And then what happens at 2.30? Rip! It goes higher. If it goes higher at 2 o'clock and they send it there and keep it there until 2.30, usually at 2.30, during the conference portion, it'll go the other direction. And just like a, like a tsunami. Right before a tsunami hits the uh, shore, this big rush of the water moves away from the beach. 
and retail Ricks and retail Rondas walk out there thinking, wow, look how far I can walk out. There's no water out here. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> that, you know, tsunami comes in and they hang ten for the last time. So the bottom line is, is you don't want to be caught up in that. When these big moves like this occur, these are characteristics that as a new trader, as a new student, you're not going to know. You're not going to identify it. And you may view it as something, oh, this is one of those retail patterns that I looked at. And look at this candlestick. The candles, You have to know candlesticks because candlesticks will tell you that it's all nonsense. It's literally nonsense. These markets run on macros, scripts. They're absolutely controlled by AI. And when they're not being controlled by AI, manual intervention comes in. And manual intervention always comes in at these big market reports. And you cannot know. Nobody can know. Not me, not anyone else. And anybody else tells you they know they're fucking full of shit. You can't be, a, you can't be positioned ahead of them because you don't know what they're going to do. But you wait. Once they do that first measure of manipulation, it's over. It's done. The narrative is easy then. You can see what they're going to run for next. It's over. The guessing game part is now removed. It's a sit, wait. Wait for that mark to walk his ass into your crosshairs. And when that happens, you take a deep breath, you release it, and you hug the trigger and take it down. But you have to learn to wait. See, usually what happens is people know that these market drivers are very animated. It sends the price higher, sends the price lower, and they want to be a part of that. And they know they're not going to get the high. They know they're not going to get the low. But they just want to get a little bit of the action in the middle. But you don't know where the middle would be because you're new. You don't know if you're getting caught up in a move that's going to be sustained in that direction because you haven't been doing it long enough. And you won't know yourself well enough if you're inexperienced to know what it feels like to get out. If you know you, you're probably wrong, you're not going to know that. So you're going to be paralyzed by the, the volatility. And like a deer in headlights, you're going to be staring. And it might be running against you and you just won't get out of it. And then all of a sudden, phew, Hunter handles, you're, you're decimated. You didn't use a stop. Your account's gone. It's over. <laughs> Thanks for playing. All of those things are avoidable. So when I teach don't trade on Mondays, that's not an every Monday thing. There's context that needs to be applied to that. Look at every single Monday. If there is no FOMC or non-farm payroll event in the latter portions of the week, look at every Monday as a consolidation day that sets up the weekly scenario for that weekly range. Usually Mondays will be treated like an Asian range. Okay, Think about it like that in terms of Forex for a daily range, it's that quiet period where the market usually allows sentiment to build up and that sentiment through the trading volume that comes in on Monday, then market makers will use that book to map out how they want to use the weekly range and then take them and run them against the, you know, rake them across the coals. Now, there are some times where I might sit on my hands and not trade on a Monday waiting for more information. And that Monday may become animated and, and actually present more opportunity than I expected. I may not have any plan of going in on that Monday, but it may change depending upon how we open up and how we traded. And I'll go in there at 10 o'clock to noon and do something. And if it really runs nice in the morning and it leaves some really clear, obvious liquidity, then I'll use that in the afternoon session, PM session, silver bullet, or I'll do the last hour of trading. But it doesn't mean I have to sit down every Monday and do it. So there's a lot of things that have to be weighed out. But I'm generally not trying to trade on a Monday because I want to see what the weekly range is going to do. And I don't have to have the highest high and the lowest low, especially in this volatility, because it can make another pass and wipe out that previous intraweek high. I don't have a problem getting stopped out and taking a loss in that situation. And if everything still stays and remains the same, and I think that that was a sort of stop hunt, I'll reposition and ride it where I think it's going to go. But you as a new student, and honestly, folks, be, be genuine here. You know where you are in your learning right now. You know what your experience level is. 
would you have the confidence to get back into a trade like that? You, right now, you wouldn't. And you wouldn't know what to do if you got into a trade that's profitable or unprofitable and it starts running in your favor. Panic is going to set in and it's going to paralyze you. And you can be paralyzed in extremely fast, profitable trades. It can be overwhelming and bewildering. Just as much and many times, if not more, than a losing trade. See, a losing trade, you'll, you'll be willing to hold on to a losing trade because you think if you hold on to it long enough, it's, it's, it's going to turn around. It just can't keep going. Well, on CPI, it can. And when you think it's over and you have no breath left in your lungs, it, it curb stomps you. And then it's it. You're over. It's over. Not only are you blown out in your account, but now your desire to ever want to trade it is gone because you've elevated the entire career that you hoped for. It must be commanded and delivered upon in that one day. And that's foolishness. That's, that, that's the problem with new traders. You put so much emphasis on one day. The, the results of one day matter so much that either you succeed or you fail on that one day. That's why all of you are failing these funded account challenges because you're trying to do that. I want to get past in the funded account because they said I can do it in four days and damn it, I got to do it in four. I got to do it in four. What's the point of doing that and then blowing it after you're funded, trying to do more than what's required? That's what these phenomenon pursuant traders do. They, they, they want to get through some kind of challenge. And then if the challenge isn't hard enough for them, they have to do it in the minimum time to go out and prove to everybody on social media. Instead of just saying, I'm going to quietly shut the fuck up, do what I'm supposed to do, make no ego about it, no drama about it, do it. Make my money. And at the end of the year, if you want to showboat and parade around and say, look, motherfuckers, this is what I did. Bam. Hello. That's how you do it. But talking about it before you do it or while you're doing it, that's dumb. You're inviting so much confusion. And that's all I'm trying to do by teaching new students. That's the that's the target audience here. When I say don't trade on Mondays unless now you got some more amplification to this today. Trade on Mondays when it's non-farm payroll Friday. But don't force a trade. Because you don't have the skill set or the experience to navigate the Thursday and the Friday of non-farm payroll week because it can be wooly. It can be little squirrely things that you know, pop out of nowhere for someone that's less seasoned with experience. They may fall victim to that. They, they'll be quick to abandon their idea. They think the market's going to go here or there based on the weekly chart. And they see something that takes place on a five or 15 minute chart and completely changes their opinion because it happened fast. But those elements of speed on Thursday and Friday of non-farm payroll are there for a reason to get retail chasing it or scare the living shit out of them. And that sentiment disruption causes new opportunity and counterparty for liquidity. FOMC, weeks. Definitely trade on Mondays. But you can't trade ahead of FOMC. Because you don't know where they're going to take it, just like CPI. You don't know where you don't know where they're going to take it. You have no idea. I don't, because it's manual intervention. It's manual intervention where you don't know where they're going to reprice it. But it's buying and selling pressure. That's bullshit. That is bullshit. Okay, that's just the way it is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you learned from somebody you have a lot of respect for, and they said they used to be a market maker, and they used to work at a bank, and they used to do this, and they used to do that. But guess what? They're full of shit. They parrot what they were told. And if you're told the same shit all the time, nobody else comes out there and shows you otherwise, you're going to believe that bullshit. And I'm standing out here telling you all, you're all fucking wrong. You're all wrong. And because I know that is the tendency for new traders to be wrong, not be aware that they're wrong, and just recklessly gamble, I'm doing you a service by telling you, don't do those things. Don't trade these days. But the more time you spend with me, and I've laid down this foundation over the years, that's why sometimes the running joke is, ICT, don't trade on non-farm payroll. ICT later on smashing the market. 
it's just reminding my more seasoned students that they're in that category where they can do that now. Some of you want to be in that class of trader real fast, faster than it's realistic, and you can't speed it up. I promise you, if there's a way that I could take all of you on a fast track, real quick, easy way, it gets you there so much faster. I wish there was a way to do that. There isn't. Time is the educator here. That experience factor cannot be emphasized enough, like in anything. But this is very difficult because you overcomplicate it and you think about fearful things and greed comes into the equation. So I tell people that are brand new to me, don't trade on Mondays generally, but everyone knows on non-farm payroll uh, trading weeks, my students know that we look for a trading setup on Monday, Tuesday, and has to be done. No new trade positions are entered after the morning session on Wednesday. I don't give a shit how much it moves on Thursday and Friday. If you're brand new, you just study that. And over time, you'll learn what those setups were doing. You'll have more experience behind you. You won't be led by your emotions and the psychological lull to get you in chasing something fast and, and furious. You don't want to you don't want your early stages of trading being revolved around animation, excitement. You don't you don't want that. You want it to be very, very mundane, boring, just like your fucking job that pays you every week. It's a steady eddy approach to income. You want it to be just like that. And over time, you're gonna get really good at this stuff. You're gonna find your model, you're gonna find your niche, your your Favorite setup, and you're going to know exactly what you're looking for. Whatever that is for that model, I have lots of them. You're going to gravitate to one of them. And when you're comfortable and you have the experience, you will go into FOMC days. You will go into non-farm payroll Fridays. You'll trade the Thursday in front of non-farm payroll Friday. You'll trade every Monday if you want to. And you'll slap the fucking shit at a price action, and you'll leave with more money than you came in with. That's what's going to happen. That will happen. But I can't promise that to a new student because you're going to fuck up. Everybody does when they're brand new. They rush into it. They try to trade with more money than they should or with money before they should. And they don't know when to stop. They keep push, 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 push. Oh, man, that's blew my account because you want to fix it. You don't want to go home with a losing trade. Why? If you have a losing trade and it's not that much damage, learn to accept that in the beginning. That's one of the most powerful lessons you can teach yourself. Next week, when you go out there and you wreck yourself, stop. Go home with that loss for the day. It's going to hurt. It's going to ache. It's going to be an embarrassment. You're never going to want to talk about it. You don't want anybody to know about it. You're thinking, shit, I should have never done that. But it's okay. Everybody takes losing trades. Every single person takes losing trades. You're going to. You're doing a lot of those executions in the beginning while you're trying to learn. And that's why you do them in a demo. That doesn't sting. But some of you that have, well, here's a really good indication where you are mentally with this. If you're trading a demo account and you're trying to trade these taboo days, and you know you are, and you feel anxiety or a sense of fear of missing out, and you're in a fucking demo account, you're not ready. And I'm not trying to talk down or make fun of you, but that's the clearest indication that if you had the money to be in a live account, or if someone was to pay you with a free gifted funded account challenge, or I sat down and I passed the fucker for you and said, here you go, here's a funded account. You would shit your pants with it. You wouldn't make any money with it because you're not in control of yourself. You're playing around a demo and you're losing your mind over it. I made fun of that phenomenon in the early stages of my teachings on baby pips. Because that's exactly what I was watching over there on that forum. A bunch of know-it-alls that knew nothing. And they're all excited. And they're always saying, what happened in the Forex pair over here? What just happened over here? And the people that would be respected, they had the largest threads on it at the time. They'd come out and give you some bullshit excuse. What the hell are you supposed to do with that? Tell me what it's going to do beforehand. Tell me how to trade it right now. Nobody was doing that. Nobody was doing that. So I stepped out there and started giving rules. And those rules were to prevent, to protect new students. 
whenever I talk, whenever I'm promoting something that's new in my repertoire, there's a lot of in, yeah, excitement around it and people start talking, chit, chit, chit. Well, I know that's the case when you're brand new. And I know that you're watching videos where you see me executing on days that I say, don't do it. And it sounds like I don't even follow, ICT doesn't even follow his own rules. I know I follow my fucking rules. I follow my rules, but I have experience. I can navigate. You can't. I can get into a trade, realize I'm wrong, and flip it and go the other direction. In the beginning, you don't have that skill set. It's unrealistic to expect that you would. But when you're brand new, you think you should know it because you watched the fucking video. So now you're, you're, you know, and you're initiated now, right? <laughs> the League of Shadows. You're not, you're nothing but a brand new student. That's all. You're a little worm. You haven't even gone through the transformation yet. You're looking around for the next leaf to chew on. You have not got your wings yet. So I protect you as, as much as I can. But even that doesn't prevent it because you're going to do what you're going to do. And that's why I say your results are yours. If you make money, well done. Don't high five me. You earned it. And when you wreck yourself, don't blame me or my concepts because you fucked it up. You didn't listen. You did something you shouldn't have done. When I lose money, guess whose fault it is? It's fucking my fault. Mine. Nobody else made me lose money. I did. And when I make money, they ain't a motherfucker out there going to share the credit. No other mentor out there told me how I'm making money. So it's not arrogance. And it's not less than standard for you to have rules in the beginning. And also grow out of those rules later on. It's like training wheels, okay? Just like I'm teaching you how to trade, read price action in a demo. I leave it up to you to have the maturity and the ability to observe that you are ready to take on real risk with money. But I don't ever tell any of my students to do that. You'll know. And you'll know because you're bored. Not because you're bored and you want to get out there and start making money. You're bored because you keep doing the same things all the time and you don't fear missing out. You don't feel like you have to have the win or the positive return at the end. You're just doing what it is that you know you should be doing. You do the same thing when you go to work. When you're driving to work every single day, you're going there. Not thinking about, I'm going to go to work. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm really going to try to impress Carl. I'm going to try to get my, my promotion. I'm gonna, you're not doing that. You know what the fuck you got to do. You got to get there. You got to do the same old bullshit. Deal with the same old customers, same old expectations, same old quota. You're not in there trying to reinvent the wheel. You're just going there and doing business as normal. And when the clock says it's time to go home, you punch the fuck out and you go home. That's what trading needs to be like. It needs to be just like that. No Carl's on social media, no influence from your family or spouse or buddies. You're, you're focused, you're dialed in, you have rules. You absolutely have to have rules. And in the beginning, you have to have lots of rules. And over time, experience will dictate where you can peel certain rules back and say, okay, I can see that that was a training wheel. I don't need that anymore. So now I can trade on Mondays. I understand what ICT meant when he said don't trade on Mondays. There's, there's levels to the understanding that's required in this. I understand now the FOMC could have really harmed me because my natural tendency was to get in here and think I knew I was expecting this pattern to form this doji, some kind of animal pattern was suggested it was going to go higher or lower. And none of that made any fucking sense when the report came out and it just went pfft, ballistic. So now I can wait for that to occur and then get the lay of the land. Where's the liquidity? Where's the inefficiency? Who are they going to run on next? You'll understand it because you've been doing it enough. You can't just watch one month. You can't just watch one video series and hear me talk like this and say, oh, I got to figure it out now. You don't. It's experience led. You cannot condense this into a book. You can't condense it into a teaching series, a workshop, a mentorship. Mentorships ain't going to teach you this. This is you in the charts. This is you exercising control over yourself. That's the part that's expensive. It's not the time invested in learning and watching my videos or anybody else's shit. The expensive part is you going through that pain 
and that struggle of trying to adhere to rules that keep yourself disciplined and forge discipline and responsibility. And that's the that's the separating factor in successful, continuous profits. If you want to make money, you have to be disciplined. You have to have rules. And I'm giving you a, a scaling where you can go out of the initial rules. What's normal? Every fucking day I can trade. Every single day I can go out there and trade. Now, would I be a good mentor going out there and telling everybody, you need to get out there and trade every fucking day and expect to be profitable every day? That is some grade A bullshit. Human nature is what it is. It's easy to convince yourself that you're going to find something profitable. I know I went through that. I know I have students that have gone through that. I've watched other people who taught and teach and shit, and they have students that can't figure this shit out either. It's because we, as the person, the human being, we're trying to bring something in that's the, the barrier, that's the big rock in the road. You're bringing it. I brought it to my own trading, and I held on to it thinking it was something I should have treasured. And it's bullshit. You got to get all. You got to clear the road of all rocks, every distraction, and you have to have boundaries. You can't go too far to the left. You can't go too far to the right. And you got to stay steady pace. Don't speed ahead, and don't worry about behind you in the rear of your mirror. The windshield, what you're looking for. The biggest view is in front of you, and you have to take in all that new information. That's that right side of the chart. But if you're bitching about your your performance or worrying about how you should have did this and did that you know, in your last trade, you're in the rear of your mirror and you're missing all this other shit in front of you. I watch live streamers, okay? And it's, an, it's unbelievably uncanny that they'll do something because they've invited other people to, to watch them and judge them live. And this is why I watch them. I'm not, I'm not watching them to learn how to trade. I'm watching the, the human behavior aspect of it and how they manage themselves, how they manage their trades, if they're showing any. And if they do something, whether they made money or, or didn't make money, the reaction to whatever their chat window says to them, says, well, you know, why didn't you do this or you should have done that, immediately go into some bullshit defending themselves. And right then and there, I'm fucking trading. I'm trading because they've lost the plot. Or if they go and say, no, it, it, it can't go lower here now. It's going to go. It's going to go higher. It's going to do this. And as soon as they start being dogmatic about it, that's what I use these live streamers for because it's absolutely flawless. It's fucking flawless. I know I'm at peak retail contrarian. And if my system, my method, my multiplier, my model is saying the opposite of what they're saying, or they see nothing on the chart. Ugh. I'm in there beating the shit out of it. And then all of a sudden, you know what's coming. You want a dose? And there it is. Because they're looking at the rear view mirror. The only time you look at the rear view mirror is when you're, you're journaling. You have to record it. Right after the right after the experience, when you close down trading, and this is the reason why you have to have sessions. If you go all day full bore, not trying to have any breaks, you are not giving yourself an opportunity to calm down because you're pumping out adrenaline, cortisol, like you are stressing the fuck out of your body. And you could be up there if you're live streaming or if you're in the privacy of your own home and you're jamming the music. You might think. You're having a good time and you're not all keyed up, but you are. And this shit will wear your immune system down. You have to rest. You have to allow your body to just relax. Just relax. One of the things that I do, I do breathing exercises. And it's, in, it's important for you as a trader to understand when you start feeling body symptoms, you know, uh, Sweaty palms, uh, maybe heart palpitations, nervousness, jittery, or you can't have anybody talk to you. I mean, I have that generally anyway, but not because I'm keyed up. Because if I want to focus, I can't have another person talking to me. Even when my child is sitting next to me and I'm, I'm teaching them, 
It's just watch and observe. If you have a question, make note of it, and then you can ask me when I'm done. If you take my attention away from what it is I'm doing, I'm not going to deliver like I expect myself to deliver. And I may snap and speak in a manner that is not becoming of a dad or a mentor. So I have to be very cautious and I have a boundary that I, I place. This, this is why I do this. It's very hard managing me. And if you have symptoms while you're trading or if you're doing analysis and you're feeling heart palpitations, you're getting anxious, you feel like you're dizzy, you start seeing stars because you're over you know, over breathing. You're you're breathing out your CO two. The easiest thing to fix when it's like that, or if you have an anxiety attack or a panic attack, is walk away from your charts, go to a different part of your house, alone, and tell yourself out loud, "There is no emergency, and you're fine." And then sit still. Put your hand on your pulse and your wrist. Find it. And count your heartbeats. You can only think about one thing. If you're physically counting and you're thinking about your heartbeats, yes, it will be probably going really, really fast at the time. Don't worry about that. Don't think about that. That's not heart attack. That's not stroke. But you're going to be thinking that's what it is. I've been there dozens of times and I have let myself go to the emergency room. And as soon as the ambulance would be at my home, I already started feeling better. Because in my mind, I was thinking, if I am having a heart attack, if I'm having a stroke, I'm in the best hands right now. So what's the problem? It was unrealistic fear. And when you trade in these taboo days with no experience, no, no boundaries, no, no idea what to do with yourself when you get in these situations, you're going to panic. If you've never had a panic attack before, you'll have one on one of these days. Be on the wrong side of CPI. And your stop loss didn't work and it's still going up against you. You're going to know exactly what panic attack feels like. Your broker ain't going to help you. They're not going to say, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, Philip. That market was so fast. Here, we're going to give you an exit at your stop loss. We're going to honor that. The fuck they are. They're not going to do that at all. They'll probably be booking you anyway. They want that maximum loss because they're going to keep it. That's the reality of the business. But when you have these symptoms, one of the breathing exercises that I do is I sit still. I usually you know, get on the floor and I sit in what is referred to as seiza. It's a, it's a meditative state. I'm sitting there and I relax myself and I try to let my core, which is like the center of your spine, become real heavy. And, and let it rest and let it go lower. What you're doing is you're relaxing your hips, you're relaxing your lower back, and you pull your shoulders back so that's square, and, you're, and you pull your chin in so everything's perfectly aligned. And you relax yourself, and you take a deep breath, blow it out. Do that three times. And then now on the fourth one, you're going to take a deep breath in, and then when you think you have taken in your full breath, there's always a little bit more room to suck in more air. Do it. Hold it. Hold it for five to 10 seconds. You probably won't be able to do it. But then you let your air come out naturally. You don't force it out like breathing out hard. Just let it fall out five seconds before you do it again. You do that three times. Number one, your blood pressure is going to drop immediately. Immediately, that corrects blood pressure. Immediately. And because you're doing it multiple times, one minute will have passed. And because you're focusing on your breathing and you're bringing in oxygen, and you're not blowing out all your CO2. See, when you hyperventilate or you start seeing stars, you feel like you're going to pass out. When I was younger and I had my first panic attack while I was in the market, I thought for sure I was going to drop dead. Because I was, I was hyperventilating. I didn't realize I was hyperventilating at the time. It felt like I couldn't breathe. But I was just breathing too much and too fast. And I was blowing out CO2. So your oxygen-rich blood is it's too much. And you'll start seeing stars and... All of a sudden, you'll have these body tinglings and sensations, and that's all normal. It just means that you just got to slow your breathing down, and that's why you see people that you know, would breathe in a paper bag because they're they're bringing in you know too much oxygen, so it allows their blood levels to regulate. So CO two becomes at optimal levels with their oxygen level, and then you'll be able to be comfortable, and then you won't panic and scare yourself anymore. So I used to keep a paper bag next to my desk. 
And if I felt those symptoms, even before I felt them full on, I would just do that. That was my you know, realization that breathing was a real core issue to keeping yourself balanced and focused. It's meditative. And you can meditate while trading. You can meditate while you're doing these things. It manages the emotional tug of war that every trader feels. I don't care who you are. You still will feel that. And these are the things I'm managing. I'm man because I have bipolarism. Like I swing from one spectrum to the next instantaneously. And sometimes on really bad days, I'll go from one extreme to the next in a matter of minutes. And you don't want to be around me. You do not want to be around me. My family members know this about me. They know my tendencies. They can see it. They can usually hear it coming. And it's very, very hard to manage. And I will not ever take medicine. But when I'm in the market, it allows me to be very focused, very, very focused because I have my mind on one thing. What is that next price going to do? And I can't panic. I can't have intrusive thoughts coming in. That's why when you hear me talking when we're doing live streams, I'm boring the fuck out of you because I'm in my element. Like I, I know this. I know this stuff. And because it allows me to focus all of my attention, I can't have anything that would cause me anger. I can't have anything unless I'm talking about shit that would trigger me. Like in these spaces where I allow myself unfiltered, where I'll say something that gets me either entertained and I want to make a, no, a, a joke about something that people will, will say either about me or themselves, or if I see something that's absolutely bullshit and I, I talk about it, it enrages me. So I get to that, that point or that extreme. And then obviously you've heard me talk about things that are very emotional because I'm a human being. I've had loss. I've had pain. I've had uh, you know real things happen in my, in my life and my family. And I've had really good things that are emotional too. And you've heard me weep and cry. And I have no shame in that. I'm a human being. You want to you want to have those experiences. It makes life much more enrich, en enrichment of those experiences being in, in a part of it. But you can have these taboo days take you into a level of panic and fear and paralysis. And you won't know what to do. You won't know what to do. So that's the reason why I told my students, don't trade on FOMC. Don't trade on non-farm payroll. Don't trade ahead of CPI. Don't trade on Mondays. Because if you're brand new, you don't know what's going to happen when you get in that situation. Now, don't take this Twitter space discussion today as a means of, okay, well, I know how to do it. <laughs> he just equipped me to do it. No, you didn't learn anything from that then. What I'm saying is, is your breathing is the beginning of every panic attack. And it's also the end of every panic attack. I had the highest form of anxiety after September 11th in 2001 like i i believe the news i believe all that stuff and i was always fearful that my family was in danger and you know i, I bought into that bullshit it, it caused a lot of agoraphobia and because i had to live two different lies hiding from a gold digger um it just compounded everything so i would have panic attacks almost every week that literally would send me to the emergency room. Either I was driving there, running red lights, speeding. How I got there without killing anybody or hurting you know, the vehicles is a miracle. But as soon as I got there, it would stop. Because in my mind, I was in a safe place. And you need to do that in your trading. You need to make your trading in your model your safe place, your home. You're home if you're trading your model. You're not at home trading somebody else on a live stream trying to copy them. I can't imagine the level of fucking fear and anxiety that would cause because you're watching somebody. You don't know the, the delay is going to come in. You don't know if the connection is going to stay on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to I'm gonna trade this guy. He's doing this. He thinks he's going to go up here. He thinks he's going to go down here. And then you're going to take a trade on that. No idea why that person is saying it's going to go here. You don't know if they're really taking a trade in a, a paper account, practice account, live account. You don't know if they actually answered it at all. And now you're in there. What constitutes holding it? Them saying they still like it when it's moving against them? And all of a sudden you start seeing them turning into a comedy show. Oh, well, you know, you're, meanwhile, you're losing real money. 
It doesn't feel like a joke to you. You're having anxiety attack. You're having fear grip you in a manner you've never felt before. And you feel powerless. And you don't want to close it because what happens if that guy's right? And then I didn't make any money. I got out when it was a losing position. And then I'm going to hear him say, oh, you dumb fucks. You didn't make any money today. Look at you. You're all losers. You're brokies. It's very important to guard your mind. Very, very important. And if you let bullshit in, you're going to get that out in your results. You have to be focused. You have to be centered. You have to have complete and utter control over yourself. And I can't do that outside of things that keep me focused on a chart. Or if I'm talking about the word, they're the only two discussions, the only two topics that would keep me from having wild swings. I'm chemically imbalanced and I, I can't always keep those things in control. But I've learned over my life that those two things are the ones that where I can do the most in terms of keeping balanced. Now, after I get a winning trade, yeah, I feel like a peacock. In the beginning, <laughs> My wife would be like, man, whatever, get the hell away from me. Now she 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 understands it's therapy. Uh, it's therapy. Okay, I go down there and I'll look at her and she's like, what did you do? And then all of a sudden I'm doing the Mick Jagger. I'm prancing around and shit. She's like, whatever. <laughs> She'll either give me a kiss or whatever. And, you know, something to that effect. But the point is, is you have to have some kind of way of releasing, whether it's the great part of being profitable or accepting the losing trade. If I have a losing trade, no problem. I go and remove myself from the charts. I have to have at least 10, 15 minutes away from it. I, got, I have to take a break from it. Unless I know it was right then and there, it was just me having an ill-placed stop loss, or I moved the stop loss too quickly, and it burns me. If I knew right then and there I, I did it wrong as the operator and everything's still good, I'll enter right then and there. But if I take the stop loss and I don't feel certain that I'm still – right about my analysis, I physically leave my room. I physically go either outside or I go to another part of my room or house. I, I'm not, I can't be in the trading room because at that moment, my tendency is I want to smash the fuck out of the marketplace. I want to exact revenge. So you think that I'm calm, cool, collected, you know, Dr. Jekyll. But when I take a losing trade, I'm fucking Mr. Hyde. Like, I'm Jack the fucking Ripper. I want to slash and gut a motherfucker. Like, I, I just really want to just unload. But I can't think clearly like that. So I have to reset myself 10, 15 minutes away. It does not matter if I miss a move. If I come back and I miss something, it's okay. I know how to get into another move. I got 81 ways. I got a lot of problems and you know, mental issues, but getting into a trade ain't one of them. I got 81 fucking ways to do that. And if the trade's there, I will get in there. But I have to separate myself from that torn wrestling match of I got to get it back. I got to be right. I got to be perfect because that's my pursuit. That's the, that's the plague in me. I'm pursuing perfection, and I know I will never obtain it until I leave this body. But I can't obtain it here. But it doesn't change or deter the pursuit of perfection. And when I incur a loss, I go into a fucking savage mindset, and I can't think clearly. So one of the rules and boundaries I place on myself, and this is exactly what you don't have yet as a new trader, why you should not be trading on these taboo days, because you don't know yourself. I do know myself. I know exactly how I can derail myself. I know exactly when I'm going to do the things that would have led me to blowing an account like I did when I was 20. But you don't have the experience to understand that about yourself. And some of you have blinders on. You don't want to pay attention to the, the characteristics you're showing over and over and over again, which you would see if you were honest in your journal. You don't want to journal. It's too fucking uncool. All the cool guys on YouTube and Twitter says journaling's for bitches. These motherfuckers are broke telling you they don't, uh, they don't journal. Everybody, everybody that treats this like a business in one shape or form, they journal. Whether you like to believe it or not, 
It is what it is. I don't know why everybody has this thing about, oh, journaling, that's for geeks. It doesn't work. It's for nerds. Really? <laughs> if you're running a business, they have KPIs, baby. Okay? KPIs. Every Fortune 500 company has KPIs. They are measurements. And you have to make sure that you have a KPI measurement when you're trading. Uh, what's the top step? Just introduce the, um, those types of things for traders to evaluate what they're doing. Wonderful, wonderful addition. Wonderful addition to those pursuing that funded account challenge. Because it gives you metrics. That way you can measure things. And they should be fucking private. I don't know why people go on there and they screenshot that shit and say, here you go, boom. Because you're looking at outward. Uh, I just saw the time. <laughs> I got to wrap this up in three minutes. If you take your KPIs or your stats as a trader and you put them on the internet, okay, here's what's happening. You are asking outside audience members that may or may not have any real interest in you becoming a better trader. Many times they don't want to see you be a better trader. Okay, that, that's, that's the vehicle that social media – social media was instituted to cause division. It's not for networking. It's only been instituted as a way to make us go at each other. That's what it's there for, okay? And that's how it's used. Now, you might have good relationships and you may network and you make a business out of it, all that stuff. That's wonderful. But if you take your KPIs, your stats as a trader, and you put them on the internet, what you're saying about yourself is you can't grow without having someone else co-sign your growth. You need to have someone else give you an affirmation. Oh, you're the goat. Oh, I want to trade like you. And what you're doing, you don't realize it at the time, but what you're doing is you're establishing this pathway where you're only satisfied if people are sucking you off on the public. If they're out there kissing and licking your ass and saying you're the goat, you are going to do trades to try to upstage the last time you did it. And that is not what a professional trader does. They don't give a fuck what anybody else thinks. They don't give a fuck how much somebody else made or how much they lost. They don't give a shit. All they care about is are they following their model? Are they minding their own fucking business? Because when I make money, you ain't spending it. When I lose it, you're not giving it back to me and, and putting a Band-Aid on it and fixing it for me. It's all me. And there ain't a trader walking this planet that's better than me. I don't need to put that shit on the internet. You don't either. And when you do that stuff, you are taking yourself off the clearest, shortest path to excellence. When you do that kind of stuff, you've elevated the game so prematurely, you have now made it about being relevant instead of being consistently profitable, working with your model, and keeping your KPIs, your business stats as a trader, private. That's how you have the excellence of growth, maturity as a trader. All of these people out there demanding that you do this and do that. You know what that is? That's them sucking. And they just want to see, oh, somebody else is miserable, just as miserable as I am. I'm not saying there aren't people out there that can share their stats and their accomplishments. And they're just sharing because they were either asked to do so and they don't have any real intentions outside of just saying, okay, I'm part of the community. They asked me, yeah, I'll share it to you. I'm not bragging. I'm not saying I'm better than somebody else. I'm just saying you asked for it and here it is. But largely what you're seeing in the industry, social media community in terms of trading, anytime someone shows stats, 90% of the time they're bullshit, they're fake. Or they're doing so and they may have earned those stats realistically and for real, genuinely. And they may not be that long in trading, but they don't know the damage that they're doing because they're creating Olympic size feats in terms of, well, I got a lot of likes on that because I made 20% last month in my trades. 
and I had a 90% success rate and my drawdown was only this and my you know, risk to reward model, you know, rating was this and that. What you're doing is you're taking your eyes off of the main focus, which is following your model and becoming bored in that model. You don't want to have any invitation for elevated cortisol and adrenaline in your trading. You need to keep that at bay. And the only way you can do that is by keeping your progress private. That's how you do it, folks. That's the secret to it. Because as soon as you invite other people to, to critique it, you can make a fucking thousand dollars every hour and, and have a 100% strike rate. Somebody's going to come out there and talk shit about you. And it may be legit. You may be able to do all those things and have the receipts to prove it. And there's still going to be people coming out there saying you're full of shit, you're a fake, you're a fraud, and it's photoshopped and it's all horseshit because they can't live in their own skin. So don't trade in these taboo days because all these problems will manifest themselves there. If you're brand new, don't trade those days. Take freedom. Over time, you will learn how to do these things. You won't be influenced by social media's trap. I got to prove, I got to show I'm relevant to the next guy. No, you don't. Are you feeding your, uh, your face on a weekly basis with the profits? Are you feeding your family's face on the weekly profits? Are you taking care of your ends? Are they meeting? Because that's what this is about. Fuck Lambo. Okay, fuck mansions, fuck heated swimming pools, fuck Corvettes, all that shit. It's all it's all irrelevant. It's about making sure you can eat. The way you live right now can be an improved, or it can go way beyond your imagination and dreams. It's where you take it, but you can't speed it up. Where you believe you can be right now, I guarantee you. That's not even far enough yet. Your perspective is limited because you know where you are right now. You know what you can and can't do right now. Can you go out next week and make $10,000 in the, in the course of trading with real money? Can you do that? Most of you probably can't. But most of you on social media would pretend that you could. And you have to balance that stuff. Don't get caught up in the stuff that's on social media that makes you feel like you have to go out there and establish yourself as an identity. And that's your, that's your identity as a trader. If you're brand new, your goal is keep your nose in the charts, learn what your tendencies are. Are you able to keep focused? Are you able to identify that you're in a, a problematic condition in the marketplace that you're going to lose control of yourself? That's these taboo days. All of my students that are mature, and any other model, they can trade on every single one of those days. And they do. But in the beginning, they were told and they were trained, don't touch them until you know how to handle them. They're rattlesnakes. And until you learn how to pick up a snake safely, it still doesn't mean that you can't get bit by one, but they have learned how to handle snakes. And in these days, there's snakes in the grass. And you gotta be real, real careful. Because if you don't know, what you don't know, <laughs> you can find your ass getting bit. And you can end yourself mentally. You may have more capital to trade with, but because you've done something and completely scared yourself out of it, you're done. You're never touching it again. I've trained students that did that to themselves, and they never gave themselves a chance to really learn. Told them these things. Don't trade these days. They did it. Boom. I'm scared. I can't trade anymore. No more. That's it. My wife said, nope, can't do it. I'm done. I'm a single income family member. I took this thing on your right, but I know I can't do it. I'm stopping. Okay, well done. If you know you're never going to come out of that mindset and you're stopping, that's the best outcome. And you're not going to hear a mentor tell you that. They're going to say, oh, you're a bitch. You quit. No, that's someone that is plugged in to know what they're willing to do and what they're not willing to do. And if you know that you are not going to be willing to make the changes and, and develop the discipline, you know you, you are going to do this again, 
and there's no fixing that, the best thing you can do is stop. That is the best outcome. There's no shame in that. But you can do this. There are rules that you have to apply. In certain days in the beginning, you don't trade. In time, experience will dictate this. You'll be able to trade those things too and slap the shit out of them. You can do it. But everything I teach has a context. And many times the trolls and haters and the people that want to sow bullshit to make themselves look better because they can't do it with their own results, they'll say things that aren't true. And they'll twist and contort things I've said or say things I didn't say and take everything out of context. And you as a new viewer, a new person, you see this stuff and you're weak-minded. Oh, that person has an opinion. Let me not be an independent thinker or go and investigate the things on, a, on my own. Let me just adopt their mindset because I'm a lazy fuck and I'll just do that. And there it is. And join the banging wagon. And then you're the one getting laughed at because we're bringing receipts all the time. I got extremely profitable students, absolutely verified, paid out to the fucking gills. More people coming all the time. I got so many fucking interview requests. It's, it's ridiculous. And I'll close it here. I have done more interviews, and I'm not sure if it's something inside of Zoom, because I'm using Zoom when I have the interviews with the, the students. My connection's fine. And I've had five different individuals from different parts of the world where there's so much buffering going on. Their, their image will freeze up, and it's always the, the image where they look – Silly because their eyes are half rolled up in their head and <laughs> it looks like they're they tasted lemon juice for the first time. <laughs> it's it's pretty funny stuff, but it, it it's not it's not something I want to put on my YouTube channel. Let's just put it that way. It, it doesn't look professional. It doesn't look. I have two of them up on my uh, my channel now that I, I'm not real pleased with the capture, and it's not because of the person or the their storyline that I'm displeased with it's the fact that the recording of it because of the buffering that went on over the the broadband that was being used um it was always saying that their internet connection was low so it wouldn't it wouldn't capture uh the frame rate that would be favorable for a playback on a, a video so I, I don't really want to do audio only but if i get i'm going to try two more interviews i got and if they are the same thing. One's from Australia and one's right in here in the United States. So if I still get the same thing I'm getting there, I'm just going to cancel the Zoom uh, membership I have with them. And I'll probably just do them audibly where you'll hear someone. I just wanted to have a face. And I know some of you all wanted to have that experience with me too. But if you have some suggestions, I'm open to hear it You because know, I have a lot of people that make a lot of money and they want to have the experience of sitting down and, and talking with me. And I'm sure you'd like to watch and see them too. But just want to touch base and let you know that's what's been going on. So anyway, I'm probably in the doghouse. My wife's going to give me the the evil eye when I go down the steps. And <laughs> uh, An hour, huh? Yeah. I'm 23 minutes late. So I'm going to close this one. Enjoy your weekend tomorrow, which is Sunday, July 9th, 2023 at 2 p.m. Uh, there will be a lecture for macros so that link will be tweeted when youtube is done processing it and until i talk to you next week be safe